Welcome to the demonstration series on managing Ruckus ICX devices using the SmartZone for SmartZone Release 5.0 and ICX Firmware version 8.8.0. In this demonstration, I will show you the ICX Firmware upgrade capabilities within SmartZone 5.0. This will include the upload of firmware files into SmartZone, the requirements for firmware process to function, and the steps to perform a firmware upgrade on a Ruckus ICX switch from SmartZone. Let's get started. So first we log into SmartZone. And the first screen we come to is the dashboard of the wireless devices. Now one thing to point out and like to make sure and people see is that you actually can go up to a wired section within SmartZone as well and this would be able to display all the switches that are being managed and uh, being configured within SmartZone. So first when we click on that we see that we have a health and this indicates how many switches. We only have two set up in this demonstration but it does give you the total ports such as 32, to, 32 total ports of all the switches we have uh, and the status of those ports in the sense that we have six that are up, no warnings against those ports and we have nine down and then we have 17 that are admin down. So as a result, we can see which, which ports are active, and we can see that they're broken out, broken out into their capabilities as well. If we click on the down arrow here on traffic analysis, it does give us the indication of the top switches. Uh, in this case, we see the two switches here listed. And then over on the right-hand side, it also indicates the top ports of, when it's based on throughput as well. Now to first analyze the firmware that we have on our switches that are being managed by SmartZone, we go to the Switches tab. So let's click on that. And within this, we can see in the top window, we can just slide over to the right and we can see the firmware versions that are on those particular switches. We can also, if from a system or even from a group standpoint, be able to click on that group or view the particular firmwares that are being represented within that group or from a system depending on what part of the tree that you have uh, selected over up at the top left. In this case we can see we have a single model type uh, which both switches are 7150C12Ps and we can see that both of them are running the same firmware. In this case it is the 208 firmware uh, and we are going to upgrade that to a newer version of that firmware. So we can see those, the information from a group perspective here. Now do know that uh, firmware is based on an individual switch basis. So if we want to look at the firmware on a specific switch or the details of that firmware, we need to click on the switch itself. Once we do that, we, can ha we have a firmware history tab that we can click on. And that allows us to be able to identify the history of what's happened when that in that switch in the sense of what's been upgraded from a smart zone perspective. In this case, in this one switch, we see we have one firmware change is actually a downgrade. So I can represent or show or to walk you through the firmware upgrade. However, on the other switch, we can see on it that we actually have a little bit more history, including a failed situation uh, on this switch. Uh, we can see that in this particular episode or this particular firmware attempt, we see that we had a failure. And do note that most failures do give you some kind of feedback on what could have been the cause for that issue. In this case, we had an issue because Telnet was not enabled on the switch. And so therefore, it caused the login to time out. And we can see the example here. So it's important to understand or for us to point out that for firmware to upgrade and to function correctly, Telnet service or server, or server does need to be enabled on your switch. However, you can have a password set on that. Uh, that does not matter, but just know that that Telnet service does need to be active for this feature to function within SmartZone. So now that we've seen the switches that we want to upgrade, what we need to first do is upgrade or basically upload the files of the firmware that we want these switches upgraded to. We do that by going over to the tab we see on the left that's administration. And underneath administration, we'll see an upgrade tab. We'll click on that. And then there'll be a tab up at the top that says switch firmware. 
We will click on that and it will indicate all the firmware that has been uploaded to SmartZone that would allow or be available for switches to upgrade. So the key understanding here is that the firmware that we want to upgrade needs to be uploaded to SmartZone and then SmartZone will use that upgrade or that, that upload to be able to upgrade the switches that we have in the environment. So we're going to go ahead and click on Browse here and we're going to select the B276 which is the specific firmware we're going to upgrade these switches to. Click Open and then we're going to upload that to the SmartZone. Do note that I selected the zip file for the unified image package and that includes the manifest file. So when you download the firmware, it will be in zip form and that zip file is what you want to upload into SmartZone. The switch files are included in that package and which includes the firmware and the boot image. So that's important to understand. And then files will be listed below that includes the switches that are supported for each firmware package that you have uploaded within SmartZone. So it's important to see that the switches you're trying to upgrade are listed as models that are supported within the firmware that's going to be listed uh, as we will see once this is completed uh, within the firmware options that we have within SmartZone. So we see that file has now been uploaded. This is the file we're going to be uploading the firmware of uh, to the switches. And notice all the switches that are supported for this particular firmware that we have listed here. So once we've gotten that uploaded into SmartZone, we can go back to the Switches tab and we can then select the switches that we want upgraded. Now in this case, we can upgrade these individually, but also you can go and select multiple switches by holding down the Shift key, selecting both of these, and then we can actually upgrade these simultaneously and be able to provide the new firmware for both of these switches. So once we've selected both of those, we're going to go to the More tab and we're going to click on Schedule Firmware. Once we do that, we're going to get this up with this pop-up window. The pop-up window is going to allow us to select the firmware that we want upgraded. And do note that if we select multiple switches that are different switch uh, models, uh, we can upload those or upgrade those. But do note that only the firmwares that support both of those switch models will be in this drop-down menu. So if it were a case we had one firmware that only supported one switch, uh, but did not support the other models that we had selected, if we're, we're upgrading uh, multiple ones at the same time, then your firmware that you're wanting to upgrade might not be listed in here. And so therefore you might need to do those as individual jobs. In this case, we have the same switches, and so therefore this option is available to us. So we're going to go ahead and click on this model, or this firmware, and then we're going to be able to be able to choose between switch and router code, uh, depending on what practical or what purpose we're using this switch for. In our particular example, we're just going to stay with the switch code, uh, and then we can also apply the firmware either now, or we can collect or select a later date. At that point, if we do later date, we simply come in here, we select the date and the time, uh, and then we do push OK. In this case, we are going to go ahead and do it now, so we can do it from a demonstration standpoint. And then once we do that, we're going to click on OK. And it tells us that that upgrade or that job has been submitted successfully, and our switches are now going into the process of being updated. Now while these switches are being updated, I want to go over a few things of what's happening or what's taking place while this update's occurring. So as you can see here, once the firmware process is initiated, the first thing that happens is it issues a command to copy the current flash primary code into the secondary code, uh, and so, or the secondary partition. So as a result, we do not lose the particular flash or the particular firmware that we're using currently, but rather it just sends it to the secondary partition. And so if we need to uh, downgrade or revert back, we can do so by simply booting to the secondary code. Once that happens, we see a copy of the new code is being performed through HTTPS copy from SmartZone. At that point, the primary partition is being uploaded with the new firmware, 
and then we have a new command that is added into the running config which is boot system primary ensuring that this particular switch is going to boot to that new partition regardless of what partition it was previously booting to and see that also uh, that is put into the config and then that config is saved so that running config is saved from a write mem or a save to the config file and then at that point then we have a reload of that switch naturally because uh, naturally it's going to the primary partition because of the configuration that was added within the running config before it was saved now a couple of things to point out is is that the support for the firmware is placed in the primary flash flash only with the initial support of this ICX-M and then also note that you would have a mismatch of primary and secondary because as we just mentioned that will actually copy the new firmware to the primary partition and for you to have both primary and secondary flash matching once you've confirmed that that firmware is going to work for you and is working correctly in your environment you'll need to issue from the switch standpoint the copy flash flash secondary which will copy that newly upgraded firmware in the primary partition to the secondary partition and so therefore both of those will match and it's important to understand that if you are scheduling this make sure you do not schedule it during an automatic or a on-demand config backup because it can confuse and cause complications note that the auto run starts at midnight every day based on your local time zone now I pause the, the recording so you won't have to go through the time length it takes for those to upgrade but uh, these have upgraded and it's important to understand that as this upgrading process takes place each step within the firmware uh, upgrade is monitored for success so we receive feedback our smart zone receives feedback and making sure that that uh, that has completed successfully if any of those processes when it's upgrading fail then it will abort that process and indicate it by a failure within smart zone so let's take a look at these now hopefully this has been upgraded now we'll go in here we'll click on firmware history and we can see that here is the firmware upgrade that we have actually just completed and we can see down here also we have a firmware upgrade history timestamp as well indicating exactly what firmware we went from and the firmware we went to uh, and as a result that will be recorded in smart zone here let's go to the other switch just to verify and make sure it went through a successful process as well because each one of these jobs are independent uh, when it comes to connecting to that switch uh, and so we can see here also we now have a new completion of a firmware upgrade on the other switch as well and also see that we have a timestamp here that indicates that that firmware was uh, to and from excuse me from and to firmware uh, based on that particular job that we applied so with that, it completes the demonstration of firmware upgrade within SmartZone 5.0 to a Ruckus ICX 7000 series platform switch. There are other videos in this series that provide you details on the other tabs that you see down here and much more detail in each one of those. I encourage you to go look for those videos within this series, providing you more details on how to manage switches within SmartZone. Thanks for watching.